Molly, I just heard the big news from my brother. Congratulations on getting engaged. If it isn't Christy. I heard from my family that you and him have been together for about three months now, but thinking that you'd both already be thinking about marriage is pretty crazy to me. I hear that you both plan to have the wedding in another two months at a restaurant? Uh, yeah. I almost feel as though he wants to get married to me so badly that he has no patience left in himself. Well, you are living pretty close to our family's house, and you have been for a long time now. And even though he's ten years older than me and you, you guys have known each other for so long that it's almost as though you've been dating a lot longer than three months. So I don't find you guys getting married too strange. It's just crazy is all. <laughs> Would you shut up, please? Huh? Ugh, I've had enough of this. It's beginning to become a huge bother for me, so I think I'm going to call it quits. You and I are no longer friends. Molly. Um. Listen, back in the day, you were really a good friend of mine and all. But ever since you had to start sitting in that wheelchair two years ago, it's been a pain in my butt being friends with you. Huh? For some reason, everyone seems to think it's okay to have me be the one to take care of you all the time, just because we were good friends and I live near you. And as for my parents, I have no idea why, but it seems like they feel some kind of obligation to have me help you around and such. So, whatever, I guess. The only reason I've been able to stick around and care for you this long is because I've been after that really top-notch man that you happen to be related to. Stick around? The only reason that I've been around helping you is so that I could get your brother to start taking an interest in me. He's known about me for a long time, but not enough to have any interest in me. But I felt that if I showed him that I'm a caring person by pushing you around and being a good friend of yours, he'd really start taking a liking to me. And guess what? He has taken a huge liking to me, and so I have no use for you anymore. What are you talking about? You were just using me so that you could get closer to my brother and get him to like you? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but listen here. Don't you dare go telling him about that or else I'll push you and that wheelchair down a flight of stairs. Because if he learns that I've only been caring for you to get to him, he might not love me anymore. The only reason he wants to marry me is because he thinks I'm selfless and caring towards people like you. And to be honest, even if you did start to talk to him about what I've said, I doubt he'll believe you. He'll probably just turn around and tell you to stop talking badly about the woman he loves. <laughs> so this is the way you've thought of me all along? How else did you want me to think of you? Do you really think I am the kind of person that is happy with sacrificing their time just to help a cripple with no reward in sight? I was only using you like a tool so that I could get your brother to fall for me like he has and then proceed to marry him. And would you look at that? It worked. I've, I've heard enough from you. I understand what I mean to you now and so I've had enough. Even if you are being true about how you feel about me, it's not going to matter. I know that I can live perfectly fine on my own without your help, and I'm going to start that life right now. Huh? I am thankful that you helped me find a job after I ended up in this wheelchair. And because of that, I'm able to make some decent money. I'll have to start thinking about what I'm going to do when I go out and plan it all out well, but I'm so used to that now that I don't need you there to help me. And honestly, there are other people besides you that can help me if I need it. So you are no longer needed by me, Molly. Thank you for everything up until now. Hmm. Christy? Do you have some time? I know that you're already aware that tomorrow's wedding is going to be held at a restaurant, but I have to ask, are you alright with not showing up for it? I'm sure you are, right? Huh? It's been a little while since we last talked and this is what you want to talk about? You're asking me to stay away on the day of my brother's wedding? 
I'm sorry, but that's a little strange of you to be asking his own little sister. All I'm asking is that you tell everyone that you're not feeling too well and that that's the reason for you not making it to the wedding tomorrow. However, if you really want to come tomorrow, then you'd better be walking into the wedding. <laughs> because you coming in in that wheelchair of yours will embarrass me in front of my family. From what I've read, the restaurant is fully accessible to those in wheelchairs, so... But what I'm saying is that wheelchairs are not allowed in my wedding. I don't want my family and friends knowing that within the family I'm marrying into, there's a cripple in a wheelchair. You do realize that both you and I share a lot of friends, so why is it a huge problem now if they know? I don't care about that. I'm talking about what'll happen tomorrow. There are going to be people coming tomorrow that don't know about you or your wheelchair, and I want it to stay that way. Are you going to understand what I'm asking you right now? I am marrying your brother because I think he is the perfect man, but when it comes to his little sister, I only see you as being a stain on his reputation that I don't want people looking at. All right. Fine, I'll stay here at home tomorrow while you all enjoy the wedding. Go ahead and remove my name from the guest list. Ah, and there's one other thing. I'd like for you to leave your parents' house for good as well. <laughs> Why should I do that? I'm sure you're well aware that after I marry your brother, I'm going to be moving into your parents' house with him and your parents. But you are in the way of that. If I have to move into that house with you still living there, then things are going to stay the same as they've been for the past two years, and I'm going to have to care for your needs. So before the wedding finishes tomorrow, I want you out of that house. <laughs> Christy. Huh? Ryan? You're at home right now with me, so why are you choosing to text me instead of coming over to my room? Well, right now mom and dad are in the living room and I don't want them to hear what I want to say to you. For right now at least. Okay? Just a second ago, I saw that you were texting someone on your phone and you had a pretty miserable looking face. Um, well, yeah. I'm sorry, but when I saw you looking that way, I walked by and took a quick look at your phone screen. Were you talking with Molly? I saw that she told you that tomorrow's wedding wouldn't allow wheelchairs. And that she asked you to not show up to the wedding tomorrow, right? What the hell is up with all that? Um, you saw all of that from her then? I really want you to be able to tell me everything about what's going on between you two. Christy! Hey! What the hell is going on over here? What are you talking about? I just showed up to the restaurant in my wedding dress, but there isn't a single soul here. I am the bride, after all, and so I had to go and get my dress on and do my makeup and hair and everything, so I was expecting to get here when everyone else was already showing up. But my mom and dad, my aunts and uncles, even my cousins, and not just all of my family, but Ryan's family as well, and even our friends. Not a single one of them is here right now to celebrate my wedding. And not just all of them, but even Ryan's not here right now to see me. The restaurant isn't even open right now either. How the hell am I going to get in there? Tell me what the actual hell is going on right now. Um, Molly, what are you even going on about right now? I thought that the wedding had been canceled and that everyone had already been informed, including you. Huh? Yesterday evening, my brother went over to your place and there he talked with your parents about everything and about how the wedding would be canceled and that he'd no longer be engaged to you. And to make sure that the reservation and all the food that's already been prepared doesn't go to waste, Ryan is having his boss and the rest of the company come there and throw a small party while enjoying all that food. Huh? What the frick are you talking about, Christy? 
Last night, Ryan did end up coming over to my place for a bit, but he was here to talk to my parents about the wedding today and to tell them that wheelchairs would not be allowed at the wedding. And he told them that meant you wouldn't be able to come. And before he left, he told them that what all that meant was exactly how it sounded, while well, he had a very serious look on his face. Molly, are you going to be okay? What are you talking about? Why are you asking me that? Are you sure you listened in on everything that my brother said to your parents last night? I did. That's what I just told you. And from what I heard, Ryan agreed with what I said about you and what I was asking for. And so he was here to let my parents know that you wouldn't be showing up at the wedding. Well, you're right to think that the conversation they had was about me not being able to come to the wedding and that I'd ultimately be taken off the guest list. But my brother was actually protesting to your parents about how you used me to get closer to him and that he knew you didn't actually care about me whatsoever, and that was all due to me being in this wheelchair. Huh? He protested. Ryan is telling me that he's going to talk with you now, so you go ahead and talk with him about this. Molly? Ryan, is that you? Um... What exactly do you think that conversation with your parents yesterday meant? Uh, well, um, what did I think it meant? I thought you were talking with my parents about how your sister and her wheelchair are in our way, and that for the sake of our happy future, you wouldn't be allowing her to come to our wedding. That's only what you want to think. The reason I was there last night is because the way you talked about my sister is not acceptable. And I had to complain to your parents about that. Huh? And just a quick side note. You didn't listen to a single thing yesterday during my conversation with them. Because all you did was sit on the couch in the other room looking at your phone the whole time. I just assumed that you guys were done talking about the important stuff. Well, unfortunately, we were only getting started with the important stuff. Stuff like how I'm no longer going to be marrying you. Y you're joking, right? Hey, Ollie, I know that you're aware that Christy is the person that saved your life. But for her, or for you to talk to her like she means nothing to you after what she did, is just terrible. And it shocked me to my core. Huh? She saved my life? What are you talking about now? Huh? Wait a sec. Are you kidding me? You never even realized something like that either this whole time? Huh? Uh, what? This is... this is just... Ryan! What the hell are you talking about? How about you just get your butt back to my place and then we could talk about all of this face to face. I'm sorry, but this isn't something I can talk about through text. This is all just a joke, right? When I was about to fall down those stairs, you stepped in to save me? Molly, back then you were talking a whole lot with someone else while walking and you never noticed the flight of stairs ahead of yourself. I tried to yell at you to look out for the stairs as you continued to chat with your friend, but you didn't seem to be listening to a word I was saying. So when you were about to lose your footing and fall all the way down those stairs, I reached in to help you fall back towards the hallway, which then led to me falling all the way down that flight of stairs instead. Back then, I had just assumed you were trying to be a little jerk by hitting me in the chest with your arm and that you got what you deserved by falling down those stairs right after. So that's why you ended up in the wheelchair. My parents made me take care of you for the next two years as though we were obligated to do so for you. For the longest time, I didn't want you to feel responsible for me ending up like this, so I never talked to you about what happened that day. But to actually think that by not talking to you about what happened, you just assumed I was trying to mess with you and that I was the one that fell down those stairs for it? But I... I just don't... I'm going to be very honest with you about this now, since things have changed so much between us. Molly, you never seem to care about what other people are saying to you, do you? You always like to make everything seem as though it's about you, 
And then anything that doesn't have anything to do with you directly, you just forget about or change. Huh? You think that that's... When my brother was talking about how he wasn't going to marry you anymore, you did the same thing. When he was at your house talking with you and your parents, he was very upset with you. But you changed what was going on in your mind so that it looked as though he was just there to agree with you on not wanting me to come to the wedding because of my wheelchair. Is that right? I see. You're probably not going to be able to understand all of this right away. Well, I'm sorry, but with the way you've become, I no longer want to have anything to do with you. Huh? I'm not sure if after all this is over, you'll be able to think hard about what you've done and change your ways due to all of it. But as of right now, I'm having a really hard time believing that you've said so many terrible things to me, yet have not once said an apology to me for it. Well, then what the hell should I do? Right now, it seems like nobody is going to be on my side after what you've all done. And you should take the time to think about why that is. Although at this point, you're probably not even listening to the advice I'm giving. Anyway, I know I'm the kind of person that's able to put up with a lot of crap, but this has all gone way too far. I want you to stay away from me forever now. Christy! A few days after what had gone down, Molly's parents were kind enough to give Ryan a lot of money for all the time and effort that Molly had wasted of his, and then moved away from being near our house. And as of now, Molly has been moved into her godmother's house, somewhere way out of town as neither of her parents are willing to house her anymore after the embarrassment and shame she brought them. Her godmother is having her go to therapy now after what she said to me, and after not having any recollection of what I did for her to save her life. And hopefully with time, Molly is going to be able to find an answer to why she's so self-centered, and to how she'll be able to make up for her mistakes. What she had done really did mess both myself and Ryan up mentally, but the two of us are working hard together to get over what happened to us. And another thing to do with me. I've been told that if I continue to go through rehabilitation for a while longer, I might actually have a chance of walking again. And so, as of right now, I'm putting all my attention on going to rehab and working towards a future where I no longer have to think about what I sacrificed to save Molly. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story. Hey, I know you're in there. Open the door. I've been ringing the intercom for a while now. How long are you going to keep me waiting? You're such a useless daughter-in-law. As I'm always saying, I can't have you coming here every day like this. Why can't I visit my daughter-in-law? I know you're just sitting around watching TV. When your mother-in-law comes to visit you, you should let her in and make some tea. Does your husband know about this? He warned you just the other day not to cause trouble. He seemed quite disappointed. Why are we talking about my husband? It's none of your business. Just let me in. I'm sorry, but I can't let you in today. I've been suffering from morning sickness lately. That's just another excuse to avoid me, isn't it? I know what you're thinking. I wonder why Tucker married a girl like you. Was there anything urgent you wanted to talk about? Oh, yes. I wanted to ask you something. Tell me which hospital you go for the prenatal checkups. Why do you want to know that? I need to know so that I can go meet my newborn grandchild. Or are you telling me you won't even allow me to meet your baby? All right. I'll send the info to you later. Good. Tiffany, are you okay? Well, there is no way you'd be okay, I guess. You stole my lovely son and got pregnant with his baby. That's your punishment for that. That's why I pushed you down the stairs. I hope you have a miscarriage. What are you talking about? 
This is no time to bully me. Did you have a miscarriage? You deserved it. Sarah fell down the stairs. Sarah? She's Tucker's little sister, but we're close like real siblings. We got pregnant around the same time, so we decided to go to the same hospital. Today, we were at the hospital together, and while I was in the bathroom, someone pushed her and she fell down the stairs. Really? Just now, you said you pushed me down the stairs. Were you the one? What are you trying to say? Where were you this afternoon? Sarah and I had similar clothes today, and we're about the same height. Did you confuse Sarah with me and push her down the stairs? You're suspecting me? If that was true, it'd be your fault. Why would it be my fault? If you hadn't stolen Tucker from me, I wouldn't have done that. Is that a confession? Don't be ridiculous. If anything happens to Sarah's child, it'd be your fault. I'll charge you pain and suffering damages in that case. Also, you'd have to divorce my son. I didn't do anything. No, it's your fault. You should prepare for the divorce. Got it? Mom, what on earth were you thinking? What's wrong? What do you mean, what's wrong? I heard you pushed Sarah down the stairs. What's more, you were actually trying to harm Tiffany. You knew both of them were pregnant. How could you put the baby's lives in danger like that? I'm not the one who pushed her. But they were both fine, weren't they? I'm sorry for what happened to Sarah. It should have been Tiffany instead. You're fooled by that toxic woman. I have to free you from that woman's curse. You need to stop this. You've always been a helicopter parent. You just want me to be your puppet and act as you please. That's not true. I'm just worried about you. Anyway, the issue here is not about me. It's about Sarah and Tiffany. Even if you deny it, I'm convinced it was you. Tucker? How dare you say that to your mother? Then, where were you around noon? I was having tea with some neighbors. Really? I'm pretty sure you've asked your friends to cover you up. I don't trust you. Why can't you trust what your mother says? It must be that woman. She's made you a bad boy. Stop calling my wife that woman. I've had enough of this. It's no use talking to you. Tucker? You must have told Tucker. Yes, I informed him of the accident. I can't believe you. Tucker used to be such a good boy. He was so sweet. But now he's turned against me. This is all your fault. Why would it be my fault? I was against his marriage with you from the very beginning. A girl like you, who grew up in an abusive environment, is not fit to be with my son. I don't know why he fell for a woman like you. When I first went to say hi to you, you seemed to have accepted me. You told me that I can think of you as my real mother. My own mother neglected me, so I was so happy to have the opportunity to build a good relationship with you. I said that meaning I'll treat you the same way as your real mother did. I believed you. I never thought you'd betray me. I didn't betray you. You just believed what you wanted to believe. That's all. You don't even feel bad about it. As soon as we got married, you called me a failure and a useless daughter-in-law. Your condescending look is just like my mother's. What? I'm the boss among the women who live in this neighborhood. How dare you equate me to a poor idiot like your mother? All your expensive clothes and jewelry were bought with your husband's earnings. Does he approve of that? What he earns belongs to both of us. In other words, I have the right to use his money. I won't let him complain about how I spend it. I see. 
Then do as you please. You'll regret it, though. You're so annoying. Tiffany, it's time for you to divorce my son. I prepared the divorce papers on your behalf. You should be grateful. I already filled out Tucker's part. Do you know what you're saying? You may not know this, but it's okay to have someone else fill out your divorce papers. Well, you have to provide a reason why that person can't write it themselves. I'm sure they'll accept it if I write that my son injured his hand. But that wouldn't count unless Tucker agrees to it. Worst case scenario, you could be charged with a crime. Silly girl. Tucker cares about me more than anyone else in the world. If I tell him to break up with you, he will. Right now, he's still under your evil spell and wouldn't listen to me, but... Once he spends some time away from you, I'm sure he'll go back to the sweet and obedient Tucker he used to be. I think you should worry more about yourself than us. What do you mean by that? It sounds like sour grapes. Oh, you haven't noticed yet? Your husband told me that he's going to charge you for all the money you've spent on yourself without his approval. What? You're lying, right? I'm not lying. I just talked to your husband last night. It's still just a rough estimate, but it's probably a little less than 50k. I was surprised to hear that you spent so much. Wait a minute! Why would a husband charge his wife money? No matter how many times he told you not to spend money on your personal luxury, you never listened. He's been putting up with your actions for years, but this time, he lost his patience. He wants you to take responsibility for what you've done. Charging you money is the first step. I don't have that kind of money. What should I do? That's none of my business. You useless daughter-in-law. Tucker, please. I need you to go talk to your father. There's a good reason why I bought those expensive clothes and jewelry. It is important to be in a good position among the neighborhood in order to gather information and not to be looked down on by newcomers. As the boss of this neighborhood, I had to look neat and show dignity. Your father has forgotten what it takes to live in this wealthy community. So please, persuade him not to charge me any money. I refuse. Why? Because I agree with Dad. You have no idea what I've been through. I dress neatly for the sake of our family. Mom, you're always so selfish. You over-exaggerate when it comes to expressing your own feelings, but you almost never care about the people around you. That's not true. I've always cared about you deeply and always put you first. No. You were just trying to make me do what you wanted me to do. You've always been like that. You wouldn't let me do anything without your permission. Even when it came to making friends. Have I ever been able to make my own decision in anything? No. How to spend the day. What books to buy. Which friends to make. I had to follow your will in deciding on everything. Did you know that's considered neglect, too? That's an exaggeration. I just wanted you to become a great man. Your excessive interference has even affected my friendships. You took away the opportunities for me to grow through relationships. Oh, no! That's why you don't like Tiffany. Because I chose to marry her on my own, and she's not someone you picked. But even if you didn't like that... That's no reason to bully her. No one would want to help a person who would pick on their spouses. What am I supposed to do then? There's no way I can live with a 50k debt. You're on your own. You've made your bed. Now lie in it. I understand. You won't take my side either. 
then I'll ask my neighbors to help me. They trust me, so I'm sure they'll easily lend me some money. You're trying to rely on others again. It's no use asking your neighbors, though. What? How can you be so sure? I happened to meet the person living next door the other day. She said she already heard rumors about you. What rumors? That you pushed Sarah down the stairs. That wasn't me. But why would they know about that? She must have told them. That woman spread words to torment me. Stop blaming Tiffany like that. The source of the rumor is the hospital. Tiffany and Sarah go to a general hospital near our house, and it seems like one of the neighbors saw the moment you pushed her. No way! I made sure no one was looking at me. You've decided to stop covering it up. Well, I already know the truth, so it doesn't matter anyways. Now that they know, none of the neighbors trust you anymore. What am I supposed to do now? This is all your fault. Why do I have to go through all this? I'll sue you. Give back my happiness. What in the world did I do to you? And what are you trying to sue me for? Did you think I'd be intimidated if you told me you'd sue me? You're making fun of me. My life is about to be ruined because you married Tucker. I would have lived in peace if it wasn't for you. Why did I push Sarah instead of you? I had to carefully observe my target. You have no remorse at all, do you? Why would I have remorse? Other than mistaking Sarah with you, I've done nothing wrong. You're just like my own mother who abused me. She was a person who would never admit her wrongdoings, no matter what. If I opposed her even a little, she would slap me in the face. You guys are cowardly people who try to escape by blaming others. Do you understand why we would oppose our parents? Huh? It's just that you guys don't like our decisions. It's not just that. Our human rights have been violated and taken away by you parents. However, in order to protect ourselves, we had no choice but to obey. And yet, you treat your children as if they were your possessions. And to top it off. You turn a blind eye to the people who you've hurt. That's why your family abandoned you. What? They wouldn't abandon me. They still haven't told you. Your husband, Tucker, and Sarah—they're all cutting ties with you. No way! Anyone could have seen this coming. After all the suffering you've put them through, you pushed a pregnant woman down the stairs. After cutting you off. Your husband is going to start living alone. That house is in his name now, so he's going to sell it and use that money to move out. What? Why is this happening? You'd better get ready to move out too, or else they'll throw away your belongings without your permission. Tiffany, can't you do something about this? You have to help me. I'll apologize for everything I've done. How much will your apology mean to me? I'll get down on my knees or whatever. It's not right to break off a family relationship that easily, don't you think? I don't know. I've already cut ties with my own mother. Oh no! You should at least reflect on what you've done. I guess this will be our last conversation then. Goodbye. Where am I supposed to go now? I heard Sarah was discharged from the hospital. Yeah, I'm really glad she and the baby were okay. Indeed, I was worried that if anything happened, it would be my fault. Stop right there! You should not be blaming yourself. I know. You tend to blame yourself for anything bad that's happening around you, but you've got to stop this bad habit. I grew up with my mom telling me it's your fault for everything, so it's not easy. But I feel like I've been able to let go of some of my past traumas through this quarrel with your mother. 
If you ever feel like blaming yourself again, just tell me. I'll remind you as many times as it takes to make you understand it's not your fault. Thank you. I won't be a toxic mother like those two. I'm going to be a good and kind mother. We'll make things work out together. And so, the incident caused by my mother in law came to an end. It caused a great deal of turmoil, but I was able to get rid of my mean mother in law, and my husband was able to say goodbye to his mother, who had taunted him all his life. After that, my mother in law went back to her parents' house, but even there, everyone knew what had happened. I believe she can never walk with her head held high. In order to pay the money her husband had demanded, she started to work for the first time in several decades. I hear she comes home worn out every day. In the meantime, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. I am so glad that nothing happened to him. My father in law looks very happy every time he sees our boy.